So this video is integrated three. This is the chapter 12 um, home uh, classwork number one. Um, so on this, just a quick little um, reminder. When we are dealing with um, a unit circle, um, you want to make sure you understand what values are what. So this point here, 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 here. All of these, okay, all of these from here to here, here to here, these are all going to be pi six. So this is pi six, this is five pi six, this is seven pi six, this is 11 pi six. So we want to remember that. Um, if we're going from here, 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 all of these are force. So this would be pi force. This would be three pi force. This would be um, five pi force. This would be seven pi force. All of these are our thirds. So this is going to be pi thirds. This is going to be two pi thirds. This is going to be um, four pi thirds. And this is going to be five pi thirds. Okay. Now this is zero radians. This is pi radians. This is pi halves. And this is three pi halves. Okay, so we want to make sure we understand that. Now, in terms of coordinates, and this is two pi going all the way around at zero. Um, in terms of coordinates, this is one comma zero. This is zero comma, sorry, negative one comma zero, apologize. Negative one comma zero. Up here at pi halves, this is zero comma one. Down at three pi halves, that would be zero comma negative one. Now, I'm just gonna focus on quadrant one because if I know quadrant one, I know all the other quadrants because they're just going to be the same coordinates, but just the signs are going to be different. So at pi six, um, when I'm doing this, you want to think about the following. So you want to think about that we are going from this is short comma long, okay, short comma long. Let me do it in a different color so we can see better, or maybe in a red. Okay, so this is, um, sorry, long comma short, I apologize. Okay, long comma short. Long is root three half, short is one half. Um, going to the pi thirds, that's gonna be long, short comma long. So when we're doing this and we are trying to um, figure these out, again, my root three, my, my pi six is going to be long comma short. So that is going to be um, root three halves comma one half. Now my pi force, is going to be root two halves comma root two halves. And my pi thirds, this is short long. That is going to be um, one half comma root three halves. So we want to understand that when we're doing these problems. Okay, so um, let's get started on the actual worksheet. So what we're going to do with these equations is we're going to try to get um, our cosine or sine or whatever trig function we're dealing with by itself. So I'm going to divide by two. I'm going to divide by two. 
and I get cosine x is equal to root 2 over 2. And you want to pay attention to what they're asking for. They're asking for all x. That means going around and around the unit circle in both directions. So the first thing I want to figure out is where's my cosine positive? Now remember, cosine are your x's. So my x's are going to be positive in quadrant 2, sorry, 1 and 4. And where is my cosine a um, root 2 halves at this point, which is pi fourths, and at this point, which is 5 pi fourths. So those are the two, two spots. Now that's if we're going from um, 0. That's if I'm going from 0 to 2 pi. Um, but I can keep going around and around and around the unit circle that direction, or I can be going around this direction, negative 2 pi, negative 4 pi, negative 6 pi, and so on. So we want all of them. So what we're going to do is we are going to be taking our answer. Hold on, let me just... Uh, taking our answer, which is going to be pi force, and I'm going to be adding and subtracting to get back to that same spot by adding 2 pi over and over again, or subtracting 2 pi over and over again. And so I'm going to say 2 pi n. And my other answer is going to be 5 pi force. And again, I'm going to be adding and subtracting 2 pi over and over again. So again, 2 pi n. And these are my answers. Now, just a quick little note. Um, I'm going to grab a highlighter. And what you do want to make sure is that I can't go from pi force to phi pi force and phi pi force to pi force by just adding something. If you're taking a look at pi force to phi pi force, you see the distance to there is not the same as the distance to here. Okay, so I can't just add something to pi force to get to phi pi force and then add that same thing to get to pi force. So I am going to have two separate answers, one where I'm adding and subtracting to my pi force and one that I'm adding and subtracting to my phi pi force. On number two, what we're going to do in this situation is I am first going to get my phi tangent x by itself by adding five. I'm going to divide both sides by five and I end up with one. Now, in this situation, we are not going to give all answers. We're going to give answers between zero and two pi. So going around the unit circle one time, that's what we're going to do. Um, so first off, um, if I'm trying to figure out where my tangent is positive, my tangent is positive in quadrant one and quadrant three. Now remember, tangent is y over x. So I want where my y over x is going to be one. So that means I'm looking for a point where my x and my y coordinates are the same. So that is going to be here at pi force because that's root two halves, root two halves. And here at five pi force because that's a negative root two halves comma negative root two halves. So my answers for x, pi force and five pi force. That's from zero to two pi. Now, if they said for all, what I'd want you to notice is if I go from pi force to five pi force, that's pi distance. I can add pi also to five pi force and get back. So if this had been a situation where, and I'm going to write it in orange, they said for all x, which is not what they asked, but if they had, then I could have taken my pi force, and I'm not going to add 2 pi onto it, because that's going to put me back to here. I could add pi and end up here, and add another pi and end up here. So it would just be plus or minus pi n. That's if they had asked us to do it for all. They're not. Okay, so the red answer is my answer. On number three, 
Um, in this case, I have a sine squared and a sine x. So I'm going to factor this. So you can kind of think of this as almost like a 2x squared minus x equals 1. So the first thing I would do if I was solving that quadratic is I would minus 1 from both sides. And then I would factor this. Now, when I factor this, um, I'm going to have a 2x and an x. Um, one of them is going to be a positive one. One of them is going to be a negative one. The negative one here is going to be multiplying with that, giving me a negative 2x. And then my positive one is going to be multiplying, giving me an x. OK, so that is going to be my answer. So now if I was to solve this, um, x is going to equal a negative 1 half, and x is going to be 1. That's what my answer is if this had been just an x squared, not like a sine x squared. OK, so really, my problem was sine x's. So I want to know where's my sine x equal to a negative 1 half, and where is my sine x equal to a 1? Well, my sine, and we want to pay attention to, we're going from 0 to 2 pi. So if I'm dealing with my sine x being a negative, sine are your y's, and y's are negative in quadrant 3 and 4. And so if I want to know where my sine is a negative 1 half, I'm thinking long comma short. So I'm going to be right here. And that is going to be at um, my pi 6. So that's going to be a 7 pi 6. And then it's also going to be here at 11 pi 6. Now, if I am trying to figure out where my sine is 1, my sine is positive up in these two quadrants. OK, that's where my sine is positive. And my sine is 1 at only one spot. My sine is 1 right up here at pi halves, because that point is 0, comma 1. So my answers to this question, um, what does x equal? x is going to be 7 pi, um, let me start from the start, um, pi halves, um, 7 pi 6, and 11 pi 6. Those are my answers. On number four, for this one, I want to get my cosine squared by itself first. I'm going to divide by four, divide by four. So I'm going to get cosine squared x is equal to three fourths. I'm going to take the square root of both sides to get my cosine x instead of a cosine squared x. When I take the square root, I get a plus or minus. I'm going to take the square root of the top, and I'm going to take the square root of the bottom. So I am going to get plus or minus root 3 over 2. Now, in this situation, they want us to do for all x. So I'm going to keep going around and around the unit circle. So if I'm trying to think of where my cosine is a root 3 halves, positive or negative, because I, I, I need all of them in this situation, positive and negative. Um, I'm thinking long comma short. So I'm going to be here at pi 6, at 5 pi 6, at 7 pi 6, and at 11 pi 6. Now, I am not going to take pi 6 and add and subtract 2 pi and do the same for 5 pi 6 and 7 pi 6 and 11 pi 6. Um, what I notice is if I am going from here to here, that is really pi away. So I can take my pi 6 and, and instead of adding and subtracting 2 pi, I can actually add pi and that is going to get me from here to here and back from here two here. Now my other two, this one here and this one here, those are also pi away from each other. So another answer is going to be 5 pi 6 
and I'm going to add and subtract pi n. Now, sometimes you might want to look and see if you're adding, if it's the same distance between all four of these. Well, from here to here is a lot longer distance than here to here. So I can't take pi six and add something to get to all four of these. Okay, it's not the same all the way around, but it is the same between my pi six and my seven pi six and my um, five pi six and my 11 pi six. So I'm going to have two separate answers and I'm going to add and subtract pi to get to each of those. Number five. Um, for this one, um, what I notice is I've got signs on both sides. So I'm going to minus sine x. I'm going to minus sine x. So I'm going to get 2 is equal to 2 sine x. I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get that sine x is equal to 1. And this is one of the ones for all. So my sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 4. And my sine is a one at one place right here at pi halves. So since I, they want at this forever and ever, I'm going to take pi halves and I'm going to keep adding two pi over and over again and subtracting it. So I'm going to add and subtract two pi n. And that's our answer. On six. On six, we've got tangent squared x plus tangent of x equals zero. So you could kind of think about this as tangent squared, sorry, as x squared plus x equals zero, where we can factor an x out of both of these. And I end up with an x equals zero and I end up with an x equal negative one. Now, remember these weren't x's, it was really tangent of x. So I've got tangent of x is equal to zero and I have tangent of x is equal to negative one. Now, um, your tangent is negative. Let me start with that one first, okay? Our tangent being negative. That's negative in quadrant two and four. Now, remember, tangent is y over x, okay? Tangent is y over x. So I'm trying to figure out where my y over x's are equal to a negative one. That is going to be here at um, 3 pi force and here at um, 7 pi force. Now, both of these are going to be pi away from each other. So I know that one set of answers is going to be 3 pi force. Oh, and actually, they want it from 0 to 2 pi. So I don't have to. Um, I don't have to add or subtract. I can list them out. So I'm gonna have a three pi force and a seven pi force. Okay, that's for this one. Now the other one, this one here, where is tangent zero? Again, that's when I want my y over x to be a zero this time. So that means my y needs to be zero. My y is zero here at zero my y is zero at pi, and my y is zero at two pi. So I'm gonna add on to this, that it's also can be zero pi and two pi. So all five of these are answers. And that's the end of this video.